What seems to be really the most discussed side hustle app, Amazon Flex, we need to ask a question. Is it even worth it driving for Amazon Flex? Because if you didn't know, there's some new features really for this year. So in this video, I'm gonna leverage my experience driving for three years on Amazon Flex. We're going to consider those new features, of course, the pay. So this year, we can answer that question. Is it worth it driving for Amazon Flex? Welcome to the channel, my name is Mike. On this channel, I help you with the gig economy, your side hustle, your full-time hustle, making money and creating multiple revenue streams. So if you are new here, consider subscribing. And regardless of the hustle, make sure to check out my Amazon storefront, that linked down below. Okay, so number one, what is Amazon Flex? Now, if you're watching this video, you might already know, but in case you don't, Amazon Flex is an on-demand delivery service to deliver Amazon packages. Now, it could be your standard packages. It could be grocery pickups at Whole Foods. You could do other store pickups or what Amazon calls instant offers. And to qualify, just so you know, you need to be 21 years of age or older. Okay, so number one, I wanna consider what's new. And then we're gonna take a look at some positives, some negatives, and then an overall verdict for driving this year. So feature number one that's new, it's Amazon Bluetooth lockers. Now really a lot of these were introduced really late in 2020. So basically it's new for 2021. So Bluetooth lockers really, as it kind of sounds like, it's gonna be Bluetooth integration to make locker deliveries as an Amazon Flex partner. Now just for some context, the three years of driving that I did on Amazon Flex was in San Diego, California. Now, of course, I'm coming to you from my hometown here in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Now make note of that because that's gonna be important later. Now, as a driver, I never had these Bluetooth lockers. I just did your standard Amazon locker delivery. There's a process, just scan your phone. It's pretty easy. But if this does make it easier to, I guess, seamlessly work with the Amazon Flex app, then I could see that as a positive. And that feature really is brand new, the Bluetooth integration on the Amazon Flex app for those locker deliveries introduced that feature in December of 2020. The next new feature that may actually give you pause is Amazon Key. Amazon Key introduced in November of 2020 allows you to, again, kind of remotely access your delivery points. Now that delivery point is your customer's garage. So it seems easy enough. Now I actually remember there being really a discussion or maybe a pilot program where the flex driver would deliver in the really front door of the customer's home. That's not what we're seeing here. It's specifically saying garage. So let me know your thoughts on that. Any privacy concerns, any other concerns, cause you would be making that delivery as the flex driver. And then thirdly, another new feature introduced on the Flex platform. This one also introduced in November 2020. That's this Amazon Flex Rewards program. That's kind of all you need to hear. I'm sure you understand where this is going here, but you'll earn one point for every delivery completed, and then you'll earn 10 points for every completed block. Now you can actually earn points faster with a really better rating. You do that with quality and reliability, and then those points can unlock different levels. Now pay attention to this because I actually do see a good amount of benefits in these levels. Now with Amazon Flex, you can go online, you can take instant offers, but really the backbone of the Flex platform is scheduling blocks. So you're going to schedule blocks to pick up packages firstly at the distribution center. You're going to take the packages and then you're going to get your delivery route. So depending on the size of your marketplace, again back in San Diego, I believe we had three different distribution centers. So we can see here on the rewards program with level two, as you get more points, you can actually set a preferred station or warehouse, a day of the week that you're gonna be delivering, a time, et cetera. And then you'll start seeing what they're calling rewards reserved offers. So those are the new features that were really just introduced. So that will affect the Flex platform and you're driving this year. Now I wanna get into some of the positives. Whenever I drove in San Diego, remember we're gonna be scheduling shifts and those shifts pay by the hour. That's a little bit different than the instant offers, but I'd schedule a shift, let's say a three or a four hour shift, and generally I get a minimum payout of $18 per hour. 
So that is a positive, driving on the Flex platform, because let's say I was driving for Uber Eats or DoorDash, let's say the payout on Flex was $20 an hour or even $18 an hour. That was guaranteed, remember. So if I'm driving on DoorDash or Uber Eats, there is no guarantee whenever I drive on those platforms. So I like that. That was definitely a positive where I could really just work at my own pace because I was guaranteed to make that hourly rate. Now, a second positive, speaking of working at your own rate. So let's say I scheduled a four hour shift. You know, I'm delivering packages and let's say that day was slow. Maybe traditionally I'd get, let's say 50 packages for a four hour shift. But for whatever reason, that shift slot, I only got, let's say 28 packages. That's fine. And I would still work my four hour shift. But if I finished that shift early, I would still get the full payout. That is huge. That is a big positive, in my opinion, on the Flex platform. Now, also, in my opinion, does that happen a lot? No, because I don't know, a lot of us are ordering from Amazon more and more here, especially in today's landscape. But I did have some shifts, and I do remember one shift in particular where I didn't have that many packages at all. And there have been stories where drivers would schedule shifts and there'd be zero packages, none. Or the shift that I had, let's say it was 15 packages, I would get paid for that full shift. But again, big caveat, the asterisk there is that is definitely rare, but it is nice when it happens. Okay, so the other side of the coin, of course, let's talk about the negatives. I talked about the cornerstone of Flex being the reservation of the blocks. Now again, you can go online. I didn't see it being super busy with those instant offers. So I would schedule blocks. In my opinion, a big negative, at least when I was driving, let me know in the comments if you feel the same way here, but these shifts could get taken by other drivers very quickly. Now I will say I saw that significantly improve in 2020 with more shifts being available, and if they were available, they would actually stay up longer. They weren't getting claimed by other drivers. But let me know. Again, down below in the comments, if you're currently active, do you see it being very competitive to get those blocks? Negative number two, and we'll see this right now on Flex, at least at the time of filming this video, but there's always really been limited onboarding as far as how many new drivers are bringing on. Now this can be a good or a bad thing because of course you don't wanna to have too many drivers, Amazon doesn't need that, and then that would be more and more competition, again, to schedule those blocks. But if you're interested in signing up for Flex, well, you'll see on their website, they're really not onboarding in a lot of marketplaces. Now, of course, I would bookmark that site. I would constantly check that Flex site if you are interested in signing up. The next negative that I've noticed, especially more recently with Amazon Flex, is the minimum payout. I always saw a minimum payout in San Diego of $18 per hour, but if we look on the actual Amazon Flex website, we can see that the minimum payout can be as low as $15 per hour. And based on the workload, the time invested for 15 an hour, in my opinion, it wouldn't be worth it. And I saved the best for last, really the biggest negative on Amazon Flex, for all of those years and going here into 2021 are undelivered packages. If you can't deliver a package for whatever reason, access issues, obviously you can't leave a package on the street side if there's no way to get to the front door, etc. If for whatever reason you can't deliver that package, you have to bring it all the way back to the warehouse. That is a policy. So that warehouse could be 20 minutes away from your home. Now, remember, you have to go to the warehouse, you have to pick up your packages, and then you're gonna deliver your route. So from there, you would of course go home. But if you have a package for whatever reason, again, you gotta go back to the warehouse and then you can go home. And the policy says if that warehouse is closed, a lot of these warehouses, they're open until 10 p.m., 10.30 p.m., but for whatever reason, if you can't get there, then you have to go back the next morning by 10 a.m. I mean, I've had that, it kind of stands a reason, right? You have a package, what am I gonna do with it? You have to, yeah, you have to return it back to the warehouse. That's always been a problem, but with the new features, with the pay, with the new reward system, let me know, what are your thoughts? Is driving for Amazon Flex here in 2021 worth it? My overall verdict, which is really echoed over the years, is yes. 
if you can at least get signed up, if you can get on the wait list at least, or ideally, of course, get activated, I absolutely think that Flex is a good option, and here's why. It's the guaranteed pay. Now, of course, you have the freedom to not drive if the pay doesn't make sense. But if you want the guaranteed pay, hopefully the 18 to $25 an hour that they're showing here for most drivers, that's pretty good. The reserved blocks is pretty good as well, ideally, so you can, of course, get the blocks that you really want. Now, there are no tips on the traditional package delivery routes. There are tips on different segments of flex. But again, with that pay, with 18, 20, ideally 20 to an hour, I'd say that's a pretty good option. Now, it is going to vary by marketplace. That's really the staple of all of these apps in the gig economy. Now, remember, I mentioned now I'm in Pittsburgh, not in San Diego. Well, to my last point about limited onboarding, they're not onboarding here in Pittsburgh. So again, I am back on the wait list. And then one more thing to pay attention to to really make sense of this yourself and decide if it's worth it for you is whenever you're actually on a route is to look at the drive time in between stops. I'll give you an example. Whenever I was driving in San Diego, it was very good. I would deliver to house A and then sometimes to their neighbor or sometimes across the street, or I would literally drive a block, you know, 60 yards, another 120 yards. It was pretty close together. But if you're finding that, you know, stop one and then stop two, it's, you know, four minutes, five minutes, seven minutes, it's gonna be a lot of driving. So you're gonna have to make that decision yourself. Am I doing a ton of driving on these routes or is it pretty close together? So let me know, down below in the comments, let's answer this question. Is it driving for Amazon Flex worth it in 2021? If you got value in this video, definitely drop me a like, and you can also click or tap the screen here for my most recent video, as well as a video recommended for you, and I'll see you in the next one.